In this roof framing seminar using the Lake Point sample plan, I'm going to go through the process of creating the beams for the design. You'll notice the I-beam supporting the larger roof panel. There are also a number of beams supporting larger spans inside the middle of the design. Specifically, I'm going to use the automatic framing to accomplish this, and then I'm going to talk about using engineered lumber versus roof trusses inside of the program. Let me open up a design without any framing, and let's get started. I have the sample plan open without any roof framing. In my plan view you can see the darker shaded gray with the upper roof panel and the lighter shaded gray area for the lower panel. I'm going to begin by placing the I-beams in the dark shaded gray area and I'm going to start with using our roof beam tool. When you click and drag the roof beam, in this case I'm going to find the corner of the wall, I'm going to click and drag all the way to the end of the roof panel, you'll notice that it comes in at the right height in the 3D view over in this area. Let me open up this beam and set the height and width. The depth of this beam is 12 inches and the width of it is 8 inches. My default beam came in at a steel eye and I'm also going to make sure that I leave the automatic height selected. On the label panel, I'm going to go ahead and specify that this beam is specifically a W1240 and I'm going to make a couple of copies of this beam. First of all, I'm going to select it, use the copy and reflect around the center of the design. Notice that the height comes in automatically since I've left the automatic heights. That's one of the nice attributes about that setting. And finally, I'm going to grab this beam and make one more copy of it. And I'm going to slide that copy into the center of the design right over the top of the windows. Let me go ahead and maximize my 3D view. Let's rotate around. The area right in here will cover the cantilevered porch. On this final beam back here, I'm going to go ahead and pull that back to the edge of the wall. And now I have the main beams for this area taken care of. The next beam that I want to place is in the garage area. I'm going to place an I-beam right in the center to cover the span. And I'm going to place a couple of glue lambs, one over this pop-out, and one more glue lamb from the structural engineers called out in this area. Let's do that from our plan view. For the I-beam in the center of the garage, again, I'm going to use the roof beam tool. I'm going to come on top of the post. We'll snap down on top of the other post that's already in there for the wall framing. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing over in this area. I'm going to come from post to post and then we'll go in and do some editing. On this beam in the center of the garage, let's double click and open it up. Now the depth of this beam is 18 inches. The width is 6 inches. Again, it's a still eye beam. In this case, I need to lower this to the top plate of the walls. I'm going to remove the automatic height. I'm going to make sure that I lock the depth. And I know that my plate height in this case is 373 and 5 eighths. Finally on the label panel let me go ahead and specify what kind of beam this is and it happens to be a W18 by 46. On the next beam let's go ahead and make some edits to this one. This is going to be a glue lamb beam that is a 12 by 5 and an eighth. I'm going to change the, my default material to a glue lamb. Again I'm going to remove the automatic top height, lock the depth, and I'm going to put the same plate height in here at 373 and 5 eighths. From the 3D view, I'm going to go ahead and grab the materials off of the darker glue lamb material that I've already used, and I'm going to apply that onto my default beam material. And then I'm going to make a few copies of this and put one in the master bath area and one in the hallway. I'll make a copy of those from our floor plan view. I'll just grab this beam over here, use the copy tool, control C, control V, paste a copy here, and then I'll also paste another copy over in this area. I'm going to stretch the first beam that we made over here and we'll pull this so it spans the wall. While it's selected, I'm going to go ahead and center that on the exterior wall right in here. And then we'll do the same thing on this beam over here. We'll pull this to the edge of the wall, edge of the wall, and then I'm going to use the center tool and I'm going to center it on the wall and let's go and take a look at it in 3D. I have all the beams completed before we begin our automatic framing and the easiest way to frame this is going to be with our automatic tools. Let's take a look at the process of how this works. Under the build menu you're going to find an option to build the framing specifically by area. In this case on the roof panel my structure components already set up. I've got a 21 inch eye joist. My material is a little bit darker than the regular wall fur framing. I like it to stand out and I've also specified for the type of material to use an eye joist. Automatic framing is the quickest way to display the framing for your roof. 
Let's go ahead and build our automatic framing and I'm going to choose the option here to automatically build the roof framing versus just building it. Automatic will keep it up to date as we go through this. Let's take a look as we create this automatic framing. The automatic framing does a pretty good job in Chief Architect and it's much faster than doing any trussing in your design. Oftentimes you're going to use a truss manufacturer. They're going to give you the engineered truss information and you're going to have that on the job site. If you need to do a section through the middle of your design, you can always draw one or two trusses in there and create a section and create that detail. Automatic framing in Chief Architect is not perfect. You'll notice that the roof beam is actually cutting through that joist. Obviously you're going to hang that on the beam and then do a blocking in the center. If you need to spend that level of detail in your design, you can easily pull that back and manually frame it. For the purpose of this video, this is good enough for me. However, when I began the project, if you take a look right below the roof, I began with this project assuming that we would be using roof trusses. After meeting with the lumber company, we determined that an engineered piece of wood versus a roof truss would be more economical to do that so now I need to generate the attic walls. Let me go through the steps in generating those attic walls. The framing for this roof was generated on the third floor. The walls that I need to generate to support that roof are in the attic. Let me go up to the attic area. I'm going to draw a marquee around the particular walls that I need. I'm going to continue to hold my shift key down and I'm going to grab these walls and create framing for them using the build framing just for those specific walls. You'll find that tool down here in the lower edit menu when the walls are selected. Since I'm using a layer set that only has the roof framing turned on, the program is asking me to turn the wall framing on. In this case, I'm not going to turn it on. Let's go ahead and generate the framing just for those individual walls and go back into our 3D view. You'll notice that that wall has now been generated and if I toggle on the vector view camera it may be a little bit easier to see on the video. You may find some of the smaller walls won't generate. If you zoom in here, notice that this wall in here did not generate. One of the things that I'll do sometimes is from the floor plan view, let's go back down to that third floor and zoom in. I'm going to grab these two walls in here and actually the small wall above the garage. From the structure panel, I'm going to choose an option to balloon through the ceiling above and make sure specifically that that framing does generate. Let's go ahead and click on the generate framing just for those walls. Very important not to generate this for the entire design since some of the walls have already been engineered and manually framed. Let's go back into our 3D view and you can see with the addition of the top plate that has ballooned all the way up through the floor below and formed that attic area. And so the framing for the roof is actually a very quick process. Here's a variation using trusses for the design. When I began the project, we assumed that we were going to be using trusses. Notice that they will actually form the area for the attic wall in this case, and that's why there wasn't an attic wall when we automatically framed it. Placing these roof trusses can be a time-consuming process since there is not an automatic process to generate them. If you do need to draw a roof truss, you can usually use the roof truss tool. You'll find that up here in your menu from your plan view underneath the framing options for a roof truss. And specifically, you can come in and draw those into the design. Now I'll switch over the layer set that includes the framing for the roof so you can see where these roof trusses are. So you can draw these individual roof trusses and again I've drawn these, used the multiple copy tool. It can be a little bit of a time consuming process. If you're only after the 3D view of your framing, it's a much faster approach just to use the automatic framing and then you can always use the truss information from your truss company and provide that as a secondary document or import that PDF into your layout sheet as you need to. The trusses that I used on this design are actually called a flat sloping truss. If I open one of these up, this end truss up here, you can see that it's an end truss and it's a flat sloping truss. There are several options in the trussing and just to give you an idea, I probably have a couple of hours into laying out these trusses. They followed the initial engineering from the truss company so they are very specific in their placement and orientation. 
The fastest way to create your framing for your roof is to automatically frame it. Let the program take advantage of it. If you're going to do stick framing and truss framing, you can also do a combination of those. The stick framing will frame around your trusses, so place those first. And then you can do your overbuild with your stick framing. All these can be manually edited to create just the view that you want. And if you're after just the 3D view of these components, then the fastest way is to create your automatic framing. And remember, any of the layer sets that you have active, in this case, if I turn on my roof framing set. You can easily isolate just those components. You can also export these out to the 3D viewer, send them out to your structural engineer or out to the job site and they can see very specifically what you have in mind for a particular design. Well that concludes this brief seminar on roof framing using the Lake Point sample plan. I began the video by placing the beams for the roofs. Automatic heights will allow you to bring it in and let the program generate it at the right elevation. You can always manually override it as I did in the areas over the garage and set the beams at the plate height. Automatic framing is a very quick way to generate your framing and I talked briefly about the advantages of roof trusses versus engineered lumber meaning that if you don't need to spend the time generating all those roof trusses then let the program generate it using an engineered lumber and make it very quick and be able to see that in a 3D view.